Hello folks and welcome back to the Slice's continued coverage of the Miami Open. Pfft, what am I? ESPN? Welcome back to the Slice folks. I'm stoked to have you. And we are going to be breaking down Federer versus Isner in the Miami Open finals. And we're also going to talk about the Canadian boys, Felix and Dennis, who made it to the semifinals as sub-20 year olds, which is just crazy. So we're going to look at those guys and we're going to break down this blockbuster final between Fetter the GOAT, and Isner the defending champion. So buckle in for this episode of The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Welcome to The Slice. Okay, folks, we have arrived to the business end of Miami. I was obviously there at the beginning of Miami, and if you're new here, go check out those videos because we got a press pass nicely enough, from the Miami Open to go cover it. So we got, just put up some Federer highlights of him practicing. You can click that link at the end of the video. Lots of stuff's been going on, uh, and we're gonna get into all that. Before we get into that, check out my other show on Patreon called The Slice Front Row. It's where you can go deeper with me. You can suggest what we're gonna talk about, have questions answered on the show. And this coming week, we got an up, a real special episode really breaking down the Sunshine Double, both tournaments, all the big topics, and previewing the clay season. So just take a minute, click the link below, check that out, and it's a way you can really support the slice and help make this better. Dennis and Felix. Man, I don't know if you guys watch this, but uh, they probably don't. But you know, maybe if you guys tag them enough, they will. Uh, but I, I was lucky enough to interview Felix Auger-Aliassime down in Miami and watch Dennis play a lot. And I'm just stoked on what these guys were able to do in Miami. Both of them making it to the semifinals of a Masters 1000, especially the Miami Open, which is like, you know, usually all the best guys are playing good and they were just making it that far in one of these tournaments is such a big deal for their careers personally, but also just for tennis in Canada. Because as far as singles male players, we haven't had them any breakthroughs like that in recent memory. Uh, and having two of them at under 20 being in the semifinals, playing like legends, like obviously Federer. We had Dennis Shapovalov play Federer today. He kind of got schooled a bit, but it's no, like you can't really blame the guy. He said before, he's like, this is my idol and you're playing him. Played a great week and got tuned in by Federer who was playing sublime tennis. And then we had Felix Auger Aliassim just keep winning. It seemed like that was his default was winning, beating really good players all week long and then losing in two tight uh, tiebreakers to John Isner who's basically impossible to break. Even though Felix did break him, which is a scary thought. These guys are absolute ballers and they've just been making Canada proud uh, making it to the fi the semifinals of Miami. So good on them and uh, congrats. Let's hear a round of applause for the Canadian kid. Give him a round of applause there. That's just unbelievable. So great job, boys. Way to make Canada proud. But now we turn to the final happening on Sunday between Federer and Isner. Feder holds a 5-2 head-to-head record against Isner, and clearly he's a bit more of a, the complete player and definitely the favorite in this matchup. But it's going to be a different match to the one versus Shapovalov because today Federer played Shapovalov and it was like break central. Shapovalov would break himself, Federer would break him. It's just a lot of errors. And John Isner has been known to play like that sometimes. But John Isner has probably the best serve on tour, um, definitely right now. And it's all about Isner's serve in this matchup. If he, I can see this going two ways. If Isner plays really well on a serve and, and holds his serve well, protects his serve, hits big aces, he puts pressure on Federer because that gives only Federer a few chances to break or to, to get ahead in this match. And Federer has been known, I've seen in the past, he needs like a lot of chances to break sometimes. He needs like five break points to get his first break. And then if he doesn't get that rolling, he gets into that zone where he gets in his head a bit, he can get nervous. And if he doesn't have as many chances to get Isner against Isner to break, then it goes to tie breaks. And when it's in a tie break, it's basically kind of more anyone's game. Whoever just plays better in those like, you know, few points, like 10 points. So if Isner really plays well and on a serve, I think it could be a tighter match than we'd expect. They did play their last match in 2015 in Shanghai. Isner actually won. He won two tiebreakers with a 6-3 set for Federer in between. But so tiebreakers have not gone Federer's way previously when playing Isner. But so if it goes if Isner plays really well on a serve and protects him to plays aggressive and he's locked in, it could get tight and interesting. But if he doesn't play well on his serve and Federer breaks him a couple times, I think Federer could walk all over him because Federer is just looking so tuned in right now. I mean, he bageled Kevin Anderson in the first set there, and then it got a bit more interesting. Kevin Anderson or Federer said Kevin made him think a lot about it, but he's still like, yeah, he made me think about the possibility of losing. He's like, not like I was ever thought I was going to lose. I'm playing too good to lose right now. 
I think that's what he thinks, and that's what I think because just watching him, he doesn't. He's not taking any mis- missteps. He's not playing shy on any of these points. The unforced errors he's making are kind of just random. It doesn't seem like because he, he's getting nervous at all. Maybe no one's put him in a nervous position, but except for Radu Albert at the beginning of the tournament. But I think Federer's just playing so confident right now that if he can get into Isner's serve, it's going to be uh, a bit of a slaughter. So those are the two ways I think th- this match could go. I think Isner can do a lot of things to hurt Federer, but Federer can do more things to hurt Isner for sure. And if they get into rallies uh, and Isner's not being aggressive, then it's going to really go Federer's way. Isner's got to play really aggressive in the rallies, I think, but not overplay. That's always a fine line that you see these pros try to ride. And that's why they're so good because they can often do that extremely well and just play an insanely high level of tennis, which I got to see all week when I was in there in Miami, which was so sweet. So check out my coverage from Miami. There's videos just Go to my channel. Uh, And if you'd like to support the slice and help us make independent tennis journalism better, if you love tennis channel and ESPN tennis but want to see more kind of amateur stuff like this, uh, you can support the slice by joining the front row fam. So click that link below I talked about at the beginning of the video. And you can go over to Patreon where you can choose to sign up for $4 a month or $10 a month to join different tiers of benefits to help join me in making this the best tennis news source on the planet. So thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think is going to happen down below. Federer, Isner. And what do you guys think about these two Canadian boys? Uh, absolutely tearing it up. And now making have made a lot of money at this tournament. Probably having a good chuckle with himself, meeting up maybe back in Canada, and then heading over to the clay. So next thing that's coming out from us is a little fan video come, dropping about some questions I did with people in Miami. And then the Front Row Show next week. So sign up for the Front Row Show, and we'll see you there. Thanks, folks, for watching. This has been fun. If you want to see another video, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to join the front row like I know you do, click here.